Wing Commander Roland Beaumont was a 19-year-old fighter pilot who flew Hawker Hurricanes during the Battle of Britain. Here he describes the hurricane and his first engagement with a mass formation of enemy bomber and fighter planes on the 15th of August 1940. The Hurricane was a wonderfully forgiving aeroplane, in those days big and powerful, but it was docile, even gentle uh, in, the, in the hands of pilots who, who really knew what they were doing. Uh, so it was, it was no great problem, uh, the business of going out uh, and taking, off, uh, taking a Hurricane off, flying it in formation, getting back and landing again. It was strong, it was stable. Hawkers have, had a characteristic of building very stable and responsive aeroplanes. I'd been trained on Hawker Hearts and Hines, which were the bipla pre the bipeds which uh, were predecessors of the Hurricane from Hawkers, and they were docile, gentle, easy to fly, powerful and strong. And the Hurricane was, was very similar. It had got, it got a monoplane wing, and not a biplane, and, it, and once you dived it you could get up to the then phenomenal speeds of uh, approaching 400 miles an hour, which were very thrilling for a, a boy pilot like myself. Somewhere approaching Weymouth, out over Lime Bay, over the sea, with Weymouth down on our port, and I suppose we were probably around, by that time, around about 14 or 15,000 feet. No other aircraft in sight, because at that time, in those sort of circumstances, there were seldom any other friendly fighters about. There were probably some uh, engaged on the interception, as you were, but they were coming from other bases, so you didn't see them. And then some, uh, about that time, we suddenly saw ahead of us in the blue sky, we saw the uh, little flashing lights appearing all over, which we got, we eventually got used to, but the first time you saw it, it was eerie. Uh, you couldn't actually relate it to what, it, what was there, but soon afterwards, the flashing lights turned into dark shapes, or, or light-coloured shapes, in fact, of, of aeroplanes, more and more of them, formation after formation, until you suddenly found yourself looking at a sky that was absolutely densely filled with aeroplanes. Now, this was a thing that was not normally seen in aviation. I had never seen it before, none of my friends had, but we'd never seen uh, over a hundred aeroplanes in one small sp uh, area of sky. Uh, a dramatic sight, and as you closed in, you were flying at a true, true speed of around about um, uh, 350 miles an hour. The enemy were coming in to, at you at something over 200 miles an hour, so you had a closing speed uh, anywhere of around 500 miles an hour. So that the scene changed extremely rapidly, and while all this was happening, in the individual pilots would be concentrating like mad on keeping their place in the formation, and each of, each of us wondering what the CO was going to do tactically. Well, on this occasion, there weren't any tactics at all. This great formation uh, got bigger and bigger and bigger until we started actually seeing what sorts of airplanes they were. There were tier upon tier of Ju-87 dive bombers with twin-engine, twin-tail fighters above them and, and behind them, which were ME-110s. And when we, I just had chance to recognize this, and I thought, well, surely the CO is going to do something. And uh, the, the CO's voice came up on the radio, and he said, um, target ahead, chaps, come on, let's surround them. And he then dives head on straight into the middle, or led us straight into the middle. No deviation, no tactics, straight into the middle, and we each uh, opened out our formation, selected our tar targets, and, and got stuck in. It was a it was an extraordinary experience. It's one that will live live with me forever. I was still 19 uh, when the main battle started, and my colleagues were about the same age. Any of us in the squadron who were over 20 th 25 were regarded as old men. So we didn't really have any time or thoughts for. Um, self-analysis. It became apparent to all of us, I suppose, when well, it became apparent to me that um, as the summer of 1940 developed into the main battle in August, um, it was becoming a dangerous, pretty dangerous business. And as we started to lose our friends day after day, uh, there was the, the feeling that, you know, your chance was, your chance were going to run out. And they're probably going to run out in due course. In the meantime, you had this job to do every day, which you've been trained for. There were certain enormous exhilaration. 
I mean, you had been trained to fly your hurricane and to fight with it, and now you've got a, a whacking great brutal enemy to attack with full authority and support. Uh, nobody was going to blame you for, for doing nasty things to the enemy. Uh, it was your job to do it, and you had to defend this country. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.